in just a minute. Thank you very much. Thank so you. If you if you've been paying any attention today, all you know, of course, the outlines of what is happening. The president's impeachment trial has begun in the Senate. It's being simulcast on television. And if you've watched, you know, the whole process is complex and tiresome and most of the time very, very boring. Meanwhile, no one in Washington, very much including the staff at the White House, can do the jobs they were elected to do while this is in progress. You should know that's not a side effect of impeachment. In many ways, it was the point all along of impeachment to stall the president's policy agenda. That was the point of the Russia hoax as well. The whole thing is highly frustrating to watch, so frustrating that you may have lost sight of the reason we are here in the first place. What is that reason? Well, the articles before the Senate accuse the president of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Those are very broad charges. They could mean essentially anything. But here's what they actually mean. Donald Trump is being impeached because he asked questions about why the vice president's son was being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars every year by foreigners for what effectively was a no-show job in an industry he knew nothing about. The obvious answer is, it's what it looked like, a crooked deal. At the very same time, Hunter Biden was getting rich from a Ukrainian energy company. His father, Joe, was overseeing the Obama administration's Ukraine policy. That's corruption. There's no other way to describe it. I don't know what they're telling you on CNN. And it's not the only example of it, by the way. The Biden name, it turns out, was also used at one point to sell a bond scheme that defrauded an American Indian tribe in South Dakota. One of Hunter Biden's closest business partners, Devin Archer, is still battling criminal charges in that case. Doesn't get a lot of coverage, but it's happening. And then there's the question of Joe Biden's brother, his younger brother, Frank. According to ABC News, in 2009, shortly after his brother became the vice president, Frank Biden signed on as the front man for a Florida charter school company called Mavericks for Education. Frank Biden openly bragged that his last name was an asset for the company. That's why they hired him, of course. He bragged it would ensure him, quote, automatic acceptance as they sought regulatory approval for their business. And it did, apparently. Biden's brother even wore presidential cufflinks to school board meetings. The arrangement made Frank Biden hundreds of thousands of dollars. The company, meanwhile, has been accused of mismanaging its schools and inflating enrollment to secure more government money. Eventually, the schools were sold, but Frank Biden kept going. He also started speculating in the Caribbean during the Obama administration. According to Breitbart, Biden began working with a solar energy company seeking to build plants in Costa Rica and Jamaica. Remember the solar energy push? Frank Biden had no experience in solar energy, but he had something more important. He had a brother serving as vice president. Both those projects were boosted by loans from the U.S. government backed by you, the taxpayer. And then there's Joe Biden himself. In an era where millions of Americans are suffocating under mountains of high interest debt, Biden spent his entire career in the Senate serving credit card companies, while at the same time making it harder for regular people to get out of their debts in bankruptcy. In return for that service, the credit card company MBNA gave Hunter Biden a job. That happened, by the way. Don't take our word for it. Here's noted non-right winger Tom Brokaw confronting Joe Biden about it in 2008. Your son was working for the company at the same time. In retrospect, wasn't it inappropriate for someone like you in the middle of all this to have your son collecting money from this big credit card company while you were on the floor protecting its interest? Absolutely not. Servant to the credit card companies? Quick, think of something more disgusting, more harmful to normal people. Running a porn site? Selling liquor to children? It's hard to imagine what's worse than that, what's more destructive. Even honest leftists are offended by it. Over the weekend, Bernie Sanders' campaign surrogate, Zephyr Teachout, wrote a piece pointing this out. Quote, Biden's career was bankrolled by the credit card industry. He delivered for it by spearheading a bankruptcy bill that made it harder for Americans to reduce their debts and help cause the financial crisis. He not only authored and voted for that bill, he split with Barack Obama and led the battle to vote down Democratic amendments, end quote. Well, that's all true. Look it up. So is Biden apologizing for what he did? No, he's not. In fact, somehow, Bernie Sanders is apologizing. For the crime of telling the truth about Joe Biden, the entire Democratic establishment has landed on Bernie Sanders with both feet. For days, he's been savaged by establishment robots like Paul Krugman of The New York Times. Quote, this is really a bad look, Krugman tweeted. It illustrates everything that makes many Democrats distrust the Sanders team and the buck stops with the candidate. Of course, there's nothing to distrust about Teachout's column. It was factually accurate in every way. But Sanders got the message, apologize, we will destroy your candidacy. He promptly groveled for mercy. Joe Biden is a friend of mine. I've known him for many, many years. He's a very decent guy. And Joe and I have strong 
disagreements on a number of issues, and we'll argue those disagreements out. Uh, but it is absolutely not my view that Joe is, is corrupt in any way. Joe is not corrupt in any way, he repeated expressionlessly, a pistol faintly visible off camera. That's not a campaign message, it's a hostage tape, taped under duress. So what's happening here? Well, simple. The self-sustaining organism that is the Democratic establishment is dumping antibodies into the system to protect itself. Bernie Sanders, like Donald Trump, is a threat to their power. Joe Biden is not a threat to their power. It's like they care about Joe Biden as a person. If they cared about Joe Biden, they would have convinced him not to run, because Biden is in no condition to be president or even to run for the job, as you've noticed. He's humiliating himself and his family. But for now, Biden is all they've got. If Hillary Clinton jumps into the race later or Michelle Obama, Biden will be tossed aside and forgotten. They're all just vessels for temporary use. What the left cares about is regaining control of the country. That's why they do whatever is necessary to protect Joe Biden for now, as long as it's necessary. Whoever threatens their power must be crushed. Hence the spectacle you watch today. Senior political analyst Britt Hume joins us tonight. So, Britt, I can't help but notice that lost in all of this conversation is why we're here in the first place. The central story, the president has been criticized for appearing to tie aid to Ukraine to this question about Hunter Biden. But the fact remains, he was asking about what the hell they were doing paying Hunter Biden all this money, and yet that's not even part of what we're talking about somehow. Why? Well, what this does get at, uh, it seems to me, Tucker, is the question of whether someone by virtue of being a presidential candidate uh, should be immunized from investigations um, by an administration of the other party. Uh, obviously, if you're going to in start investigating somebody who might be your leading political opponent or a leading political opponent, you need to tread carefully because that's not how we're supposed to do things. So what, what, what testimony from Hunter Biden, for example, uh, might get at is the question of whether there were actually legitimate reasons other than potential political benefit to President Trump of getting the Ukrainians to investigate the Biden's relationship with that company and and po what possible benefit it was to him, to his family and so on, and right. obviously therefore to his father. So that's, I think, where we where we where we are. So may I say, I mean, I think it's such a smart point and it gets to something that sincerely confuses me. I think maybe it's my bias as a journalist, but I want to hear more. I, and I don't mean this in, for partisan reasons. I actually want to hear more about the story. I want to hear from witnesses, including Hunter Biden. Republican leadership in the Senate is opposed to that. Why? Well, I think there's a, there's a sense that we get too far afield, string the process out, and that bringing on this obviously troubled son of Joe Biden uh, would would turn the uh, impeachment drama in the Senate into even more of a circus than it already appears it's going to be. So, and I think that you know institutionalists like uh, uh, Mitch McConnell feel like we don't want to we don't want to make this any longer than necessary. We want to get the president acquitted as quickly as possible, and we don't want to string this out. And we also don't want to make the Senate an embarrassment. And who knows what would happen if you start bringing in the Hunter Bidens of the world in? So I think that's the thinking. But there is a potentially legitimate reason, perhaps, for doing so. Yeah, I, I suppose I can see both sides. I still like to, to hear it. Britt, I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to dip into the, um, the proceeding in progress here, into rolling coverage. We've got a graphic up on the screen, but behind it is, is uh, Hakeem Jeffries, um, who appears to be saying something that we're going to be going to now. Which contemplates the possibility of new witness testimony. In fact, it departs from any criminal or civil trial procedure in America.